So this week what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the full live stream, all the information we've got, some bits that might have been missed, some bits that people might not have picked up on. Now I do understand that I haven't had a video for the past couple of weeks, it's just been really quiet and I don't want to just push out meaningless content on one system and drag 10 videos out of it because it's just not what I want the channel to be about. Now when Ash's Alpha 2 drops it's going to be thriving and I'm going to keep up the channel updated and keep content coming. I already have a fully edited video for next week after this one but without rambling on anymore let's just jump into the video and get amongst it all. So this month's live stream was a bit of a quiet one and it wasn't like everyone expected. I think people always want these big massive streams but you know we knew it wasn't going to come and when he dropped Alpha 2 or even the mention of Alpha anything in a tweet people start overthinking things um, or just want to get excited. They just want Alpha 2 but it was all about the UI that we're going to be seeing in Ashes of Creation. So even when he does to bear in mind that all the details in the system windows were subject to change as they're still in active development and the video was pre-recorded and featured Stephen Margaret Colby Intrepid's lead for the UI and UX design. You know it was a quiet one like I've just said but there was some valid stuff that they spoke about and you know they really are making an effort to pay attention to detail on the tiniest things you wouldn't think about that subconsciously actually affect your gameplay and your feelings about that game when you're within the world and you're trying to get immersed. Now the UI is a big thing for me it's not the main thing but it's definitely something you've got to see every minute every second on the game so you want it to be good you want some effort put in so it's nice to see Intrepid are working on this and not just giving us some place all the bullshit that kind of is rushed it, it is decent now it was broke down into style guide process inventory process iconography and the final UI mockups so I'll jump into the style guide now the style guide process we found out they created a toolkit that allows them to create a large set of windows that all look similar they then use a modular approach where they combine and tweak certain aspects. This is a toolkit that helps to allow global edits to be made easier. However, before the toolkit, it all started out as exploring shapes, design motifs, and simple graphical elements. These are then built into the final components that all match and work together, so the UI is cohesive and matches the game. Now, what you can see here again is with every element of development and every little tool that they create or design or they try and adapt for what they need their purpose, it's all about practicality and speeding things up and being more efficient. And this not only helps with the development of the game, which is brilliant, but also post launch when they are prepared and they have real freedom and they can get involved and get shit done more efficiently and faster, it'll help with new DLCs, potentially new designs. And this is what you like to see early on, because if they've got this early on, they're already thinking about this going into the game post launch you're going to have a much easier way of them consistently keeping up with updates and patches now i understand i'm getting way ahead of myself but these many benefits just from this alone now i understand it'd be boring for some folk but this is game development and honestly it really will be vital for us going into the future of ashes we then seen the inventory process we saw they started with grey boxes that they then added in details to things such as filters which in ashes of creations inventory was inventory materials and quest items this grey box then turned into an inventory system that used the styles and designs we had seen in previous segments. The entire UI process is focused on how users will interact with it. And another important point we did find out from this is we're going to be able to customise our UI. Also, we're going to be able to move pieces of the UI to better suit us and also by resizing pieces of the UI. We'll also be able to save our layouts that are linked to our role and activity and these are going to automatically change based on previous preset conditions. There was a lot of good information there, there's a lot of customization and a lot of personalization for people playing this MMO and that's really good to give you know full control to the players to play how they want and not limit the experience and with every aspect of Ashes of Creation that is really what they're going at, a real sandbox immersive experience and that is what's going to keep people captured and keep people playing this game. We then seen the iconography, which was kind of a little bit of a short segment to be fair, which showed us the icons they'd been working on, and it included things like the backpack, the quest log, even the settings and abilities, you know, such as Trembling Bellow, Aegis, Grit, Fighter, Cleric, Ranger, Rogue, Mage, Summoner, Bard, and Tang, and they even had hints that icons may change from the archetype icon to the class icon, but we still hold the elements from the base archetype, which will be especially useful for threat assessment. 
assessment. We then went into the UI mockups, which is pretty much what everyone wanted to see. This section showed us a lot of the designs for buttons, the drop down, style menus. We also saw the NPC conversation windows, quest delivery options, and crafter menu, the quest journal, general options, and the character screen. Now, honestly, I don't mind what I've seen so far. I like the direction they're going. I think it's fairly decent. I also do think some of the way they've done stuff is probably because it's also more efficient to do it this way than some other MMOs with all the animations and all the different text and stuff because while doing it when say you're talking and it zooms into the face and then zooms back to you and back and forth I think it takes a lot more effort and I don't necessarily think you need that so much in a game but what I will say is down the line kind of going off on separate thing here quickly I would like voice acting even minimalistic and definitely in the main story quests you need some voice acting some type of cinematic trailers even if it's in engine do you know what I mean because even Ark and a bunch of other games doing game engine trailers and they're pretty amazing so hopefully down the line they do this I don't think it's a priority for Alpha 2 and development right now but I think down the line it's something they should look at then after all of this they did ask for people to go and share the feedback on the forums and genuinely I think that's probably one of the best places to share your feedback if you've got any more feedback drop it in the comment section below because when I write stuff up and I will be starting to do that soon I'll implement what I've heard within different communities and I'll be giving my feedback there as well as obviously the videos but feel free to just go over there you write an essay write a small paragraph write some information just give some of your feedback make yourself a little post and see if they notice it um, and I'm sure they will be reading through and checking all this and, and it's what they want there's no point in just randomly getting angry and having outburst in certain social medias they're not going to listen just try and order and structure what you're saying and get your point across and that's how your feedback will be heard after the UI we got to see some character and world art which included the Cyclops weapon models which were fairly fucking cool we got the Cartham weapon models which I assume will link into the next live stream but we'll get to that in a bit and then we got the ambitious academic set the river stalker outfit a statue of a woman which we then saw in a teaser for the tower of Carthin, boss named Laurier Lamont which is one of the bosses we're most likely going to see in next month's live stream and finally concept for the Alien Empire starting area which looked a fucking massive and vast and as Steven said the concept art is really close to how it looks in game so what you're seeing here expect to see that in game plus some more now i think people were kind of some folk definitely were kind of drifting away and they kind of stuck around to the end to see this because stephen said there was a teaser and when the stream ended they ended it with that teaser and it was of the tower of carfin which we've seen lurking previously in other live streams we've seen people talking about on the social medias but it's going to be the focus of next month's live stream and we've previously got some law drops about this tower now personally i'm really looking forward to next month's live stream i really hope it's a hint towards more serious progression towards the scene alpha 2 but at the same time i do see some folks saying it won't be this year i still feel it'll be this year and i still feel it's definitely achievable but then again if steven thinks he needs to push it back unfortunately or fortunately for the future of the game i suppose he will do that um and i don't think any of us have got any solid dates here. it's just it is what it is but um i'm trying to keep positive hope we see it this year but yeah we'll just have to wait and see but either way next month live stream is definitely want to tune in there because the lore on this and I think it's going to be pretty amazing seeing some actual dungeon gameplay content they're my favorite streams when we get in and we see the gameplay but to get into the lore the boss we saw in the character art was Laurier Lamont which personally looked so fucking cool like that got my attention straight away a lot of details went in that I really like it now she's the headmistress of Carthen University and was one of the most important mages in the Alien Empire before the fall she however got involved in Dark Axe to try and save the Alien capital city Ayla from destruction during the fall the Dark Axe she performed we knew about uh, stuff like blood sacrifices of Beric Pulsifier this sacrifice was both successful and unsuccessful as it did slow down the ancients however it led to the residents of Carthen dying and turning into the undead and it's now known as the curse of the Carthen now what are we gonna get here is a shitload of amazing lore and people were talking about this with me and honestly if you look into the lore and the story of the game it is so immersive even for pvp as they are really onto something great now what the tower is going to offer is five floors that we know about so far now this could change so bear in mind the floor one is the arcanium 
Floor 2 is the Administrate. Floor 3 is the Crystal Halls. Moving on to Floor 4 is the Sacrificial Chamber, where that'll really get into the lore and deep shit behind you. And Floor 5 is the Observatory. Some of the mobs that have been talked about being at this location and that we will see in next stream hopefully include stuff like the Graveyard Golem, the Gardridger, the Skinwalker, the Zombie, and the Zombie Scholars. And I'm sure there's going to be bits and bobs and more things added as the development change pre Alpha 2 and post Alpha 2 and post launch, of course. So, all in all, I do believe we got some decent information here. And if you take the silver lining, this is a good stream. Is it mind blowing? Will it be as good as the next one? Definitely not. But the next one is probably going to be a really, really fucking good stream to watch. So, I would definitely tune in and check that out. And as I say, this is open to development they're constantly changing and tweaking i hope we see it this year but if they need to push it back they will it does look likely we'll get it this year but it's kind of i don't honestly think they even know they kind of have deadlines and internal dates but if steven has the funds which clearly he fucking does they'll just delete well it isn't a delay because they haven't given us a date but you know what i mean they'll push it back i personally think in my opinion they should drop it this year and get on with the alpha 2 but whether or not they do i honestly don't know because we're going to get it in bits and bobs and chunks but that's a whole video and a whole other debate as always i hope you're enjoying the progression we've seen during alpha 2 i hope you're enjoying these videos let me know in the comment sections what you think of this stream and just tell me how you feel about the development do you think it's going well did you enjoy the video do you potentially think we'll even see alpha 2 this year are you one of the guys that think we're gonna see it dipping into next year as always really appreciate you watching the video drop your comments below give the video a share and i'll catch you in the next one cheers